to say, Hello, this is Tyler Crone with the 36th District Democrats. We are so pleased to have you this evening, John Wilson, to interview for, with us for Assessor. Thank you so much. And over to you to introduce yourself. Hi, <clears throat> Hi there, I'm John Wilson. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the uh, King County Assessor. I'm uh, wrapping up my uh, second term in office. When I ran eight years ago, I promised that I'd be an activist assessor. And I think, frankly, I have been. Uh, we've gone down to Olympia twice now to fight for vital uh, property tax reform to help seniors stay in their homes. And I'm very pleased that just recently the governor signed House Bill 1355, which protects seniors from having the risk of being bumped out of the program or into a higher category because of the rightful COLA increase they got through Social Security. But there are a lot more things that we need to do. <clears throat> we have to do something about housing affordability and the role property taxes play in that. And it's time that Washington State stop being one of the 10 states that doesn't have a homeowner exemption and in the next legislative session pass true homeowner relief for all people. And I'd like them to pass renter relief, which is something we've proposed for multiple years but have been unable to get through the state house. Property taxes are a lifeblood to our community. Uh, King County generates a little over $7.2 billion in property taxes each year. That covers everything from schools through K-12 education, first responders, public safety, roads, mental health, um, parks, recreation, uh, best starts for kids, a variety of programs that we've all come to support and value. But we have to do it in a more fair and equitable way than we've done. And it's time to take that next step. And if I'm reelected assessor, I'm going to push my damnedest to make sure we get there because the time's too long for us not to do something to help taxpayers deal with the everyday costs of living these days. Thank you so much, John. I am going to get us back on the, we're learning how to use our new timer. So apologies for a quick moment in between. Our first question tonight is by Shep. Over to you, Shep, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, what will you do to educate the public about how property taxes work in Washington, what the King County Assessor's Office does, and how the public can engage with it? We're in the process right now of, of updating our external communications plan and uh, bringing someone on board to work with us to develop a more effective and, and uh, aggressive outreach program. You know, one of the great tragedies of, of COVID was, frankly, that we had a very aggressive outreach program all in place. But when COVID hit, we had to reel it all back in. And uh, it's been very hard these last three years to, to get out and talk to people. As part of that, I do numerous community meetings throughout the year, uh, and we send out e-news letters. It's too expensive, frankly, to send out mailers countywide, but we try to appear at as many community groups. We've done webinars on how property taxes work. Um, we provide uh, access to documents. We have the state's only taxpayer transparency tool that allows you, whether you're a homeowner or a renter or a business person, to see how much ballot measures on the uh, property tax ballot will actually cost you in property taxes and, and that. We've taken a lot of steps to try to make our process more transparent, uh, more accessible, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question will be asked from Jeremy. Um, a 2020 Seattle Times report showed that King County's privately owned golf courses were severely undervalued, resulting in other property owners paying more on their property taxes, potentially driving higher rents for renters who reside on those properties. What will you do to improve the fairness of how King County's privately owned golf courses are assessed? Great question, Jeremy. We've already done it. We had this survey done by an independent consultant nationally respected in evaluating golf courses. He came in, looked at how we did it, and said in the vast majority of cases, we were spot on. But the problem we have that we can't do anything about is a number of these private golf courses have restricted covenants on the property that allows limited use. They can only be used as golf courses. And golf courses by state law and by assessment practices have to be compared to other golf courses. The real challenge that we have isn't that golf courses aren't paying enough, it's that the commercial sector isn't paying enough. We ran some numbers recently that showed that the property tax balance between residential and commercial, 
the residential side pays 82% of the property taxes for King County. The commercial side pays 17.5. That's the issue we ought to be focused on is how do we rebalance that equation between the residential and the commercial so that the commercial sector is finally paying its fair share. We have huge corporate landholders here that aren't paying what they should. And if I have my way, we're gonna to go to Olympia and change state law to make sure that they do pay their fair share and that homeowners no longer have to take 80% of the burden to fund vital services. Wow, thank you. Sherry, question number three. Hi, um, currently tax relief is available for many groups. Do you think there are sufficient opportunities for tax relief? And if so, please explain. If not, what additional tax relief programs will you institute? So as, as I mentioned, Washington is one of 10 states that does not have what's commonly referred to as a homestead exemption, where the owner occupant of the house gets some break on their property taxes. We're overdue. We should have that. We should have had it five years ago. We tried this year to get it done in Olympia. There was a proposal made that was so broad in scope and had so many moving parts to it that it fell on its own weight. <clears throat> We're working right now with other assessors around the state to put forward real property tax relief for homeowners. We'd like to put it forward with, with renters as well. The challenge has been that we have certain members of the state house that block that each year, and we don't know how to get around that short of an election change. But we do need real property tax reform that makes the property tax system more progressive, more equitable, and, and helps keep people in their homes, especially working families in that. We proposed an idea that we would take the value on the state portion of the property tax, which in King County is about 40% or so. It's, uh, well, actually it's a little more than 40%, it's almost 60%. Uh, roughly of the 7.2 billion, a little over 4 billion goes to K-12 education. What we wanna do is lower the assessed value uh, $250,000 on all owner occupant homes. But what we would do is rather than cut public education, which is what some legislators of the other party have wanted to do. We want to do a shift so that if you're in a higher property value, say your name is Bill or Jeff, and you live in Medina, and you have a house worth like maybe you owe $150 <laughs> million, you might pay a little bit more. And if you're a major corporation, you're going to pay a little more. But if you're a working day family living in the 36th district, you actually have a shot at paying less, but still getting the services you need. Thank you so much. And our final prepared question this evening will be asked by Toby. Businesses currently pay personal property taxes on equipment, materials, and other assets required to run their business. Uh, besides the head of household credit for sole proprietors, how are you able to address inequities in this tax for small businesses or help business owners in marginalized communities more easily navigate the complexities of property taxes? First and foremost is to look seriously at what the personal property thresholds are and probably raise those thresholds significantly to make sure that more um, small sort of uh, locally owned corporations don't have to pay personal property. Uh, the, the other flip side of that is, and, and it was a law that actually we pushed to get Olympia passed almost 10 years ago, is, is we want to continue, but if we could expand the audit we do on the back end of businesses to make sure that large businesses are paying their fair share. Um, one of the great challenges you have is you have some companies so big that it's very difficult to make sure that they're paying their fair share. But we've got to somehow, again, within the corporate realm or the commercial realm, figure out how do you better balance that so that you do help that. The other thing is that, frankly, the county ought to look at new ways, more innovative ways to provide capitalization to business owners that are from historically disadvantaged communities. Um, but that's going to take some time, uh, although it's something that we should move on sooner rather than later. Thank you. We can now take follow-up questions. And if I missed your hand, please let me know because now I'm trying to use the timer 
eboard and manage this and it's not it's not working for me very well at the moment i'm sorry you're doing just fine like, tyler I you're see doing Shep's, just fine uh, hand okay first. Shep, please yeah, ask your question while i figure out how to do the timer correctly because i'm not doing it right sure um tell me about renter's uh tax relief I, i've never heard about that what the notion we had is is if you would offer your unit at less than full market rate we would lower the property taxes uh, but you would have to pass that savings on to the renter. It wasn't a chance to just take the money and run. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we worked with uh, groups like the Tenants Union, the Washington Poverty Action Network, um, Black Lives Matter, a variety of community groups. And we also worked with the Rental Housing uh, Association to try to figure out how you could do this in a way, you know, the, the, the fastest form of affordable housing is to preserve the affordable housing we have. And we think this is a way that slows down the drumbeat in the march to just strip down old buildings and replace them with shiny new glass boxes that always bring much higher rents and much less affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know who went first, but I'll call on Toby next. <laughs> That's a nice bill. Uh, that was a startling statistic about the residential versus commercial tax load burden. Uh, how does that compare to the assessed value uh, ratio? Well, the, 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 the problem is, is that what we have seen over the last five years in particular is residential values have gone up significantly faster than commercial values. Now, some of it is the COVID response, that there are certain sectors uh, the hospitality sector, small retail, and that, that really got hammered by COVID. But part of it is if we haven't kept in balance uh, the ratios between the residential sector and the commercial sector. And it has allowed uh, certainly large property holders on the commercial sector side uh, to, to, to get away with not paying their fair share. We've got to change that. Thank you. I see, Jeremy, your hand is up. Uh, you mentioned restrictive uh, covenants in um, your question in the answer about golf courses um, being sort of a reason why we couldn't um, make them pay their fair share. Um, another sort of instance that's been in the news lately with the restrictive covenants has been um, how that a lot of um, homeowner, homeowners associations and neighborhoods that have restrictive covenants um, are avoiding up zones due to HB 1110, uh, basically because we couldn't legally enforce it. Um, and the highest and best use may stagnate along with that. So how do we ensure that homeowners who live in those neighborhoods are paying their fair share? Well, it, it, it will evolve over time. I, I mean, I, I think first, you know, we all need to kind of take a deep breath after uh, uh, the missing middle bill passed. It, it, one of the concerns you hear at the neighborhood level in parts of, of Seattle and parts of the county is this is going to cause my property taxes to just go through the roof. No, it isn't. Everybody slow down. But what we've got to figure out is, is how do we promote smart density in communities and, and bring in that opportunity? Um, you know, I, I live in the Roosevelt neighborhood, and I frankly put together an assemblage of my neighbors to take the six residential properties that were here in an a old abandoned auto shop, and we're going to turn it into multifamily housing that's literally 150 feet away from the light rail station. We need to be thinking more about how we do things like that of doing smart density, uh, and, and I'll take care of some of that over time. questions from the e-board at this time? Otherwise, and I'm sorry that I haven't figured out the timer well, but I will get it back on track in a minute. Um, otherwise, we'd love to hear if there's any more that you would like to share with us before we close this evening. It's been a really interesting and informative interview. So thank you so much for joining with us. Well, thank you all for having me in. You, you know, um, I, I have a lot of friends. My daughter lives in the 36th district, actually. And so, you know, I, I spend some time there from time to time 
uh, visiting her. You know, I, I, I'm hoping that we can all figure out how we work together over the next four years uh, and, and move forward on bringing true property tax relief that, that doesn't gut things like K-12 education or vital community services, but for working families, for historically disadvantaged families, for those who are often on the edge of, of, of the housing bubble, whether it's in, in ownership or rental, we've got to figure a better way to make the tax system more equitable and to create the kind of community we want. And to me, a large part of that is to get to a point where we truly have a tax system that is fair and equitable. Thank you so much, John. It has been a super interesting evening and, and you've brought so much thought and care to the questions. Jeremy, I'm going to ask you to give us a brief. Um, this will conclude the formal part of our interview.